On this week's World of Saltwater Fishing, we're going into Florida Bay behind Isla Morada for the Florida Keys annual run of Spanish mackerel. But first, we're going to deviate to a secret spot that I promise isn't for the faint of heart. It's all coming up. George Poveromo's World of Saltwater Fishing. Big fish don't stand a chance. The wintertime Spanish mackerel run off the Florida Keys, in Florida Bay more specifically, is off the charts, and it is one of the most underutilized recreational angling opportunities that exist down here. And one of the reasons I wanted to partake in this because it reminded me when I grew up as a kid in North Miami's Biscayne Bay, when the winter would come, so would the Spanish mackerel. A lot of fond memories and a lot of fast action. But first, before we get on to Spanish mackerel, Jim Wilcox has a couple rubble and rock piles and wrecks that he had to try first. Jim Wilcox, longtime friend, this is I think our fourth show that we've done together. He is an entertainment person all unto himself. I need a net, brother. The net, shark's on him, oh, shark's on him. Shark's on him. Shark's on him. Break, got him. He got him. Oh, man. Get that. Anyway, he can get him the other side for the I'm camera trying. for dramatic. We got to work for the camera now. Oh, look at that jump. Oh, that was good. Woo. Woo. I, I'm telling all kind of funky stories. And then at the end of the day, George tells me he got a cop running the boat all day long. <laughs> Oh, he's orange. It's an albino redfish. Don't mess this up, George. <laughs> Come on, I've never seen one with orange fins like this. I, I, it I looks like, like an orange roughy. I like to see this. Dude, look hey, at that. He can make a long day in the water seem very, very short. It, it, he's just a funny guy, very knowledgeable, and like us, he wants to be the first to the fish. It's the opposite of being easy to get to. It's easy for people to get to Isla Morada, but it's not easy to get to where I fish because I go where other people do not go. We go in under branches and up little creeks and estuaries and places other people can't find us. That's the great thing about backcountry fishing, the way I do it, is it's not always about the fishing. People are going to see American crocodiles 10 feet away from them. They're going to see spoonbills, maybe flamingos, all kinds of bird life, predatory birds, hawks, eagles. It's not all about the fishing. And that's where this story really started off. I had my Mako 214 docked at Worldwide Sportsman in Isla Mirada, the Florida Keys, and Jim said, Let's meet at 5.30. I want to be underway like a quarter to six. He said, we want to hit some spots, get to them before anybody else. You, you pull off basically every trick to make sure you're the first boat to the spots that you want to go to. And we're going to be no exception. So leaving Worldwide Sportsman, and we're going to the back country. If you don't know your way around here, it is ultra tricky and you could find yourself in trouble rather rapidly. So we're in the 214 Mako, had both Simrads up. We've got the uh, C-Map reveal. So a period there, we were just chasing down the moon to get to our destination. And once it got light enough to where you could see 100% ahead of you, and you weren't gonna hit any floats or anything like that, we started picking up the speed with the boat and from really that point on, when we were running, we were averaging 45, 47 miles an hour. And the spot was really 10 to 12 feet of water. Anchored up current of it, had a decent uh, tide running. And then from there, it was really basic fishing in its element. Light tackle, up close, jig fishing. And we, you know, sometimes we make long casts into areas. But a lot of times we get right on top of a branch. We sneak in there quietly, tie up, and fish right below the boat. Well, the first spot, it didn't take long. We were there early, and Jim hooked up and had a beautiful redfish on. Here we go, redfish, come on, net. Coming right behind you. Come on. Come in there and take Come on, time. baby. Come on, we gotta get him quick before he gets eaten. <laughs> I'll spin you. Merry Christmas. <laughs> yeah, baby. There you go, Jim. Oh, it's, it's so nice to have my net man back, gentlemen. Good shot on that, uh, net, huh? Yeah. Don't, huh? Do your block in the tail with your hand. Oh, there you go. Excuse oh. me. 
I, I, know, I know you're such a perfectionist. Nice too. start. All right, good job, boys. Look at the sunlight on that fish. That's what I'm talking about. There you go, Jim. Go ahead, brother. Thank you. Thank you. And this guy, I'm not putting my hand no, in this put water. Your hand in the water. It's going to be a, uh, a, a jump off the high dive. And it's gone. Okay. Redfish become more prominent within Florida Keys backcountry waters during the fall, along with black drum. Redfish seek hard bottoms along or near mangroves, which hold crustaceans and mollusks. They'll also congregate around submerged trees and branches tight to mangroves and creek entrances, as well as similar bottom debris out in open water. Best bet, redfish are scent oriented. Therefore, a hole or half of a small blue crab on bottom will catch them while deterring pesky bait stealers. An art by pasta.com from Catch the Canvas Rendering. Catch the Canvas, baby. George Poveromo's World of Saltwater Fishing is proudly brought to you by Penn. Let the battle begin. Mako, you'll find them where the fish are. Bass Pro Shops and Cabela's. Your adventure starts here. Mercury Marine, go boldly. George, we'll be right back. With Jim Wilcox's secret spot heating up, we wonder what our next encounter may be. The action is taking place in the Isla Mirada, Florida Keys, backcountry waters. It was a beautiful redfish. I scooped it up in the net. We admired it. We got the skunk out of the boat. Started off with a nice redfish. Okay, time to play catch up here. The momentum is now shifting back towards us. Shrimp on a jig is very basic, but it's the most reliable way of fishing. It's the way I fish most of the time. The key when you're out in 10, 11 feet of water is getting the bait on the bottom. You do that by maybe adding a little more weight, and you do that by throwing up current, letting it drift down. Hopefully by the time it gets to the boat, you're on the bottom, and then that's where you're gonna get the bite. But you, when you get to the bottom, you wanna be near the structure or whatever you're fishing. Jim definitely had the hot rod. He was just really going well with hookups early in the morning. And I'm working on my side, and I'm catching jacks, catching catfish on there. Uh, hook one good redfish, but he's consistently getting in some good fish. Yeah, we got a nice redfish to the boat. We got another redfish to the boat. We got a couple drums to the boat. The permit. Okay, get off the anchor. Get off the anchor. Uh, hang on, Jim. Here we go. I'm All off right, the anchor. On, we got to follow this fish. We All got right. buoys out here. Coming out, too. We got to figure out what side of this thing he's on. All uh, right, here we go. I'm going to get you. Come on, we got to go, bro. How you doing? You I'm good. I'm good. Come on, we got more buoys coming up. All right. This is why we get up in the morning, boys. All right, see him near the surface. See him up there? Oh, on the brand new Battle 3, right out of the box. Don't All tell right. me it's a shark. I... What is that? No, it's a big permit. Oh it's a my huge God. permit. It's a huge Working permit. Up. Let me get the net. Could you get him from here it's if I get the net? net? It's a huge permit. I mean, as big as they get. After we chased this fish and got around a couple buoys, we were on him for like five minutes. I finally saw a big flash of a tail. And we went to a lot of effort to chase this shark down. But no, it wasn't. It was a permit as big as they get. Well, look at the size of that. Isn't it beauty? He's still got a lot of... Time. I know he does. I can see that. Neutral. How are we doing on buoys? I think we're okay. I think we're good. Oh, he's changing direction. A little reverse. Yeah, I'll go reverse. Little, oh, oh. God. I think he just got eaten. What Did happened he, there, Jim? Uh, he got eaten. Oh. See the swirl? See the swirl? Yes. He got eaten. What? I mean, that's a heartbreak. The size of that I might permit? not recover from that. I don't know if I will either. That was a, a, that was sick. a that moose was a of a fish. permit, unreal. He got bit way up the line. Ah, oh, he didn't realize it. Okay, he... back to work. Go. Go. Let's go find my buoy, get back up on it. And he got eaten by a big shark, not a 100 pounder, not a 50 pounder. This was one bite and done. We got no head, we got no nothing. Three, 400 pound shark, one bite and done. This was the exceptional one. This one that really hurt and um, that, was a, that was a tough pill to swallow. Our, what, our, our fishing today, I think the title of the show should be The Emotions of Fishing, because there was all kind of emotions, good emotions, bad emotions, sad emotions, everything. The most important thing for shows, we've always had a good time, and that's how fishing should be. It should be a good time, whether you catch them or you don't. We go back up to our numbers. There's the float. It wasn't long after we had a, a, a double header, and Jim's on another big fish. Yeah, something a little better for sure. Oh, I got something. I got the real deal here. I got the real deal here too. I, oh, oh, I got a huge red. He just jumped. I saw that thing come he up. He just jumped. He just jumped. This could have been a snook. I've nope. never seen a red jump like that. Let's me either. Let's chased. go. You going under me? Go I'm go ahead. Or I'm under you, bro. Go under. I'm going to go lower your rod. I'm coming over to your left. I got. Uh, I turned it right. Well, I might have a cobia. I don't know what I got, dude. He's on top. He did jump. Up. Where are you at? I'm. We're this gonna have to get rid of that buoy, somebody. I mean, I'm gonna get this thing. Oh! 
Yeah. You gone? Yeah, he's coming at me. Oh, coming at you? It's, it's a huge snook. It is. You got to get to death. All right, I'm gonna. I'm, it's I'm, a huge put, snook. I'll put my rod here. I'll gamble that good fish I net. got. Get the net. All right, what side you on? Over here. Coming over, guys. Over here. It's a huge. Oh. Oh. You still you have him? Yeah, I got him. Come, come on, quick, come on, quick, 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 quick. Oh, he got him. Get live. Get him over. Get him over here. Woo! Son! All right, now I Let's got to see what you got, brother. I got to get him off this buoy. He might have got me around this buoy. Let's see. I don't know if I got him on this side or not. George is on fire. Come on, All right, baby. Tim, he's coming here. Get your net. Where's the net? Where's the, the net? Here he comes. Here he comes. Before he gets sharp. Oh, that was a big bull shark, boys. Because they're happy. <laughs> there <we> go, <laughs> Giant black drum. And you see the size of that shark that came through there? <laughs> we got video proof of that bad boy. Why? Well, it was an honor to net a fish for Mr. Poveromo, finally. <laughs> I've been waiting for three years to do that. Nice job, George. I appreciate it. Thank you so yeah. much. George Poveromo's World of Saltwater Fishing is proudly brought to you by Simrad, for those who never settle. Rapala holds the world record for world records. Suffix, always use the best line. Starbright, clean and protect with Starbright. George, we'll be right back. Jim Wilcox's secret spot in the Isla Mirada, Florida Keys backcountry was truly alive with action. Now, our sights are focused on the Florida Keys run of Spanish mackerel. But first, a bit on Ocean Point Suites, where we stayed. Ocean Point Suites Key Largo is a relaxing oceanfront destination situated on 60 acres nestled amongst a protected mangrove forest. Accommodations include rooms that can sleep up to four or six individuals. Resort Suites layouts include separate bedrooms, living rooms, dining areas, and fully equipped kitchens. Ocean Point Suites also has a marina for boats up to 28 feet. It was time now to get on the Spanish mackerel. You had a bluebird sky at this point in time, just gorgeous. So I remember running 47 to 48 miles an hour. Let's get to the Spanish mackerel spot. We had three blocks of chum. We eventually make it to our zone, and here we are, eight, nine feet of water. We dropped the anchor down, put a block of chum over, I had a really good current, which is key for Spanish mackerel fishing. We had an incoming tide. We've got live shrimp. We have some jigs, we have some uh, long shank uh, number two J hooks, and you put your live shrimp onto that, and then you cast it out. And finally, boom, that shrimp got picked up, I wound tight, I'm onto a Spanish mackerel. Oh, 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 holy mackerel? Something after him, or what? I don't know what I have here. What? Oh, it's a big mackerel, baby. Oh, it's a big mack, you want the net? It's in front of, the, you know where the net is, it's a big mack. Oh, I'll just lip him. <laughs> And I got a, I got a fluorocarbon leader and a long chain clip trying to fool them. So far, it's working. Look at that, holy mackerel. <laughs> oh, oh, hey, hey, he's so big, he's dragging George around the boat. Hey, <laughs> anything he is right. Here he comes, Jimmy, big mack, too. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hey, hey. That's what George did with my snook. And I know, you're, you're trying to pay me back, yeah, I know, I know. Yeah, yeah. You got him, Jim. That's a big mackerel, bro. That is a big Spanish yeah, mackerel. It's a big Spanish mackerel on oh, this thing, too. Bro. I love being the net man. <laughs> you not, did it not really, well. not really. Yeah, but look how close. You pushed this uh, thing to the borderline. Look at how it nicks already from that long shank hook. Another, well, another group one thing about these on teeth. that net there. We might have had this thing. You don't have, he doesn't have to bite you. All you got to do is touch that tooth. I know, bleeding. you're gone. You've been yeah, bleeding enough already today. <laughs> They're here. First catch, this one's bite me brilliantly, like they do, and this is one of the thrills of Spanish mackerel fishing. You come out here with light tackle. I mean, there's a million different ways you can catch these things. You can catch them on fly, and you can catch them just on artificials. The simplest way is a shrimp and a jig, and you just throw it back there and just twitch it a little bit. You can reel it fast. They'll hit it either way. I usually start with just mono until we start getting bites. When they start biting me off, I'll just I'll switch to like 30-pound wire. Real thin wire. George's Tackle Locker. Angle Live Bait Coolers come in 7 and 13, 19, and 30 quart models. These well insulated and sealed coolers maintain water temperatures with oxygen provided by an Angle Lithium Eon rechargeable Live Bait aerator pump. Stainless steel hinges and latches enhance their durability. 
For me, it's the ease of quickly grabbing a small bait, like a crab or shrimp, versus sifting through my boat's larger live well. Angle's lift-out pull net even lets me select the size of the bait. Check them out at anglecoolers.com. Mercury Performance Stats, Island Rada Backcountry, Florida Keys. Seas, calm. Power, Mercury Pro XS V8, 250 horsepower. Prop, Mercury Inertia Eco, 19-inch pitch. Total miles, 62. Consistent cruise, 5,700 RPMs. Speed, 45 miles per hour on average. Total fuel burn, 20.5 gallons. George, we'll be right back. George Poveromo's World of Saltwater Fishing is proudly brought to you by the Florida Keys and Key West. Come as you are. ACR, the leader in marine safety electronics. Papa's Pilar Artesian Crafted Rum. Never a spectator. VMC, your expert in hooks. Art by Pasta, real life art. Visit artbypasta.com. Pasta's art is the world to him. I caught up with Pasta in his Isla Mirada, Florida Key studio and learned how he sees saltwater fishing through the eyes of a talented artist. Look for the color and the beauty. You know, we get that fish on the deck. I'm looking at the eyeballs. I'm looking at the snout. I'm looking at the shape of the forehead. Pull the fins up. Luckily, if it's a sunny day and I really get a good profile of that fish on the deck, whether we're going to release it or keep it, I'm paying attention to a lot of details shape of the tail, size of the tail compared to the rest of the fish, because these are all things in a painting that will make it change what you might believe to be real, or am I faking it, or did I not catch that fish in my life, why am I painting it? Uh, we want to make sure that we're true to our sports. We hit it. We hit it the way the Spanish mackerel should be, and uh, we just burned out those final couple dozen of live shrimp. Oh, this mackerel action is unbelievable. We're getting two bites of cast now, it's so good. It is so good. Looks just like that big permit rolling around out there. Oh. Here it comes. That's another pretty nice one, too. There it is. There it is. Holy mackerel. All right. Holy mackerel. And I'm going to picture you with it, Jim. Hey, holy mackerel, Andy. <laughs> I like that flip. I get. <laughs> Yeah, we were a little short on shrimp at the end of the day, so we, we started jigging with some artificials, and I caught a big lane snapper. It's a big snapper. Is it? Look at oh, it's a giant it. lane snapper, Look bro. Look at the size that lane. Oh, baby, he might be going in the ice box. I was going to say, you going to gamble and flip Look it? at that. Jeez. Look at Look that. Look at the size that lane snapper, that's a world man. record. That's a world record lane snapper. On an artificial, no less. Yeah, nobody, not too many guys can do that. Look at that. Huh? That's my favorite fish to eat, actually. On two? Oh, yeah. Double-headed, boys. Hey, this is a winter time in the Keys. You got everything going on in here. But I didn't this think is... they had winter in the Keys. I think maybe you could get yours into the boat. If you get a double-header picture. Oh, uh, that yeah. Would be, if okay. you can, that would be off, Jim. Hey, don't threaten me with a good time. They, these look like skirted Islander ballets from Harlem. I, I got to get my kale, too. I got mine. Okay, let me get mine. Here we and go, got double mine. header. How about that? Oh, man. We're going to be doing laundry for three weeks. It's like school mahi. Oh. Only more dangerous with the teeth. This is dangerous. <laughs> nice job, boys. Yes, I'm liking this. And then double header after double header. You know, that's kind of how it's supposed to be. That's why you don't want to be out there in a bay boat with four anglers. You'll go nuts, okay? Two is enough. They're a super fun fish. They're, it's easy for people to connect. They make long, long runs, kind of like a bone fish. So it's a good starter fish for people, and it, it's a good eating fish also. And it's a, the best thing to do when it gets cold. Hey, I'm Rod in the Florida Keys during the wintertime uh, fishing with Wild Jim was uh, always the great experience. Just, a, a, you can't say enough about the guy. Uh, pure entertainment, and we definitely went through a range of emotions. We ran long and far. We had some amazingly big fish that the sharks got. We had some really super good catches that we got. And then of course, after we bounced around and hit a lot of those little bottom points in about 10, 12 feet of water, we ended up where I really wanted to go for the sake of memory and how I grew up fishing in Miami's North Biscayne Bay, but Florida Keys style, the Florida Keys backcountry for Spanish mackerel, and that did not disappoint, textbook perfect.
Spanish mackerel blitz. Okay, this is my fourth trip with the boys, Mr. Rob and Mr. George. We had a great time as always, which is the most important thing when you're fishing. And like I said, it's always a tense start, but it always ends up with a happy ending. Uh, all kinds of rod bending action, guy riding shotgun with you like Jim Wilcox, and you're in the Florida Keys just a few days before New Year's in a beautiful day. Does it really get any better than that? If you want to keep track of our fishing adventures, we welcome you to follow us on our social media. I'm on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash george.poveromo. I'm on Instagram at George Poveromo. And you can see our shows in 4K broadcast quality on YouTube at my YouTube channel, which is George Poveromo TV. Jump aboard and ride along with us.